It's barely been a month since Apple unleashed GarageBand at version 10.4.1 and made all my Technicolor dreams come true. And yet here we are with another update, this time to version 10.4.2. I wonder what Apple have in store for us this time. Hold it, hold it, stop, stop, stop. Look, while this does, on the face of it, look like another bog standard bug fix update, if you dive into GarageBand's release notes on its support page, there are some specific features that Apple have added here and some specific problems they've fixed. Let's check it out. Okay, I'll put a link to this page down in the description so you can have a look yourself. And it is quite interesting. You can look back at all the stuff added to GarageBand since version 10.3 from the middle of last year. Well, I find it interesting anyway. Nerd! One thing to note here, I had to actively search the Mac App Store for GarageBand to be able to update. This update didn't show in my updates tab, so keep that in mind if you don't see it in yours either. There are four main additions or fixes in this update. Plugins can now be opened in controls view, which makes their functions available while using voiceover. This is fantastic. Apple's voiceover is incredible. If you're unfamiliar with it, it enables users with visual disabilities to control their computer using a rich set of keyboard commands and gestures. And it also describes aloud what appears on your screen. Most of GarageBand's stock plugins are in controls view anyway. The basic compressor here, for example, has some clearly labeled sliders and that's about it. There is no graphical user interface to speak of. A third party plugin like Valhalla Supermassive here does have a GUI, which can be problematic to work with in voiceover. In the top right of the plugin window, I can now select between editor view and controls view. As you can see, controls view breaks the plugin's controls down into basic, clearly labeled parameters which makes it far easier to work with in voiceover. Good stuff. Now this is also useful for those not working with voiceover as this gives you a clear list of every parameter that you can adjust with automation. Super useful. Next, the region header in the audio editor now updates correctly when a track is muted. Now this was a bug that meant regions in the editor window didn't reflect the status of your track if you muted or soloed it. As you can see, it's now fixed. Sounds from the 808 bass collection now sound and play correctly. This was an issue that quite a few users had, where certain software instrument sounds and drum kits just wouldn't play back properly. Instead, when triggering these sounds, you'd get a weird monotone sound instead of the desired instrument sound. Well, that's all been taken care of in 10.4.2, and I haven't found a single busted, weird sounding sound in this collection since updating. Finally, on the region tab of the audio editor, time quantize for audio regions displays as expected after a take folder is deselected and then reselected. Again, this seems to be another glitch that's been fixed. Now I can't say that I ever came across this one, but it's good that it was identified and sorted out. So that's all the big changes in GarageBand version 
point two. Yes, nothing earth-shatteringly epic here, but it shows that the folks working on GarageBand at Apple are willing to, one, listen to feedback from the community when it comes to issues and features, and two, action that feedback sharpish. And to me, that can only be a good thing. All right, if you're still not up to speed with all of the new features added in GarageBand version 10.4 that I reveal all, that sounds a bit weird, <laughs> in this video. So give it a click if you want to check it out. Take care of yourself. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.